All right, so uh, I am going to do a quick little game review of Astral Chain. Um, I put out on my Twitter a couple days ago, maybe a week ago at this point, uh, to see if people were interested in me sort of reviewing all the games that I play, since I do play a lot of games every year. I think uh, in 2021, I played 50 plus video games. Um, so, uh, instead of doing one long four hour stream at the end of the year, reviewing all of them one by one, I thought maybe it'd be nice to, uh, go back and review some of the larger games that I've played individually. Uh, obviously I won't do this for every game that I play, because a lot of them are, as I said, sort of like, you know, the indie games you get on Humble Bundle, uh, like 3,000 of them for five dollars, so, uh, you know, not every game is going to have enough material for me to actually review in any sort of meaningful capacity. But I think that Astral Chain um, for the Nintendo Switch, or at least that's what I played it on, not sure if it's on any other system, uh, is definitely worth the time of day that I would give to reviewing it. Um, just as a preface, to get out of the way, um, laying down a little bit of my preferences when it comes to video games, uh, not just video games, just, I guess, art form in general. Uh, I'm coming from this at the angle of I, um, I am on a game development team. I am a 2D artist. I do a lot of concept art, a lot of user interface stuff. Um, so I tend to look, I really scrutinize uh, the art side of things. But when it comes to gameplay, I'm a, I'm a lazy person. Uh, I, like, I like easy games. I like games that are really easy to pick up and put down. Um, I like familiar mechanics. I'm very much a creature of habit if you try to thrust me into some genre I've never heard of before. Um, it doesn't matter how good the game is. It could be the most critically acclaimed game of all time. I, I probably won't enjoy it. Um, and I just, I only say that because Astral Chain is a hack and slash game, and I am not particularly familiar with hack and slash games. Um, I played a lot of Nier Automata when that first came out, and that's one of my favorite games of all time. I'm very much a Nier fan. Uh, but when it came to that game, I did end up utilizing the uh, auto functions of that game a lot. Um, and I'll talk about that more later, because Astral Chain also has a lot of auto functions which is something I enjoyed. But yeah, just to set some expectations, I'm a very casual gamer, but an artist who is less casual, uh, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just gonna explain real quick how I'm gonna do this. I have divided my little notes sheet up here into a couple different sections, uh, and those sections are gameplay, difficulty, story, characters, uh, the soundtrack, and sounds in general. Uh, the art, uh, the length and the pacing, and then whether or not I'd recommend it to other people. Um, again, this is purely my opinion. Uh, I'm very opinionated. I like my games a very specific way. Um, so don't take it too harshly if you do not agree with me. Uh, but just to jump right in, gameplay. Um, in general, I thought the gameplay was really good. Uh, again, as I said in the beginning, not really a hack and slash person. Um, this comes in part from the fact that I have uh, <laughs> I have small hands and I can't reach all the buttons easily. Um, so I tend to have a lot of trouble when it comes to like doing snappy combos and stuff. I just I just can't get my thumb to where it needs to be in the right amount of time. Um, and you know I, I got artist hands too, so they also hurt. <laughs> so hack and slash doesn't generally tend to be my genre. Um, if I play games like this, I, I definitely go the button mashing route. Um, just kind of hit the hit the button that I know makes sword happen until the enemy stops moving. Um, but as far as that goes, I had a lot of fun hitting that button. Um, the combat was the combat was good. Uh, as I said, in, in, closer to the beginning, not the beginning now. But as I said, closer to the beginning, I had the unchained mode on. Um, I believe for the entire game, I might have left it off for the first, like, two or so chapters just to see, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll figure, I didn't figure it out. Uh, but, yeah, the Unchained mode is great. Uh, the actual combat, the minute-to-minute, -minute, like, gameplay combat is a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun using the different, 
uh, like Legion skills. I'm gonna I'm gonna be talking about this game under the assumption that you've already played it and know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna explain the plot or anything in great detail, but um, yeah, the legions that you get, so the different like I guess mo creatures creatures you can acquire over the game. Uh, they were all really fun to use. Um, a few of them I liked more than others. Um, but I did like how you could switch them out in combat. Uh, that was pretty easy. Um, pretty straightforward. My favorite legions were probably the sword legion and the, I think the arrow legion. I liked, I liked the first two because those are the ones I got used to. <laughs> the rest of them, the rest of them, um, I didn't, I didn't do much of the side content. Uh, so I didn't end up utilizing them very much because I was just so used to, you know, my friend sword guy. Um, but yeah, combat was straightforward. Uh, there was no wacky mechanics when it came to combat generally, at least not in the main story. Uh, it dropped an enemy in front of you. It showed you the enemy health bar and it said, well, go get him. Um, which I really appreciate because, uh, not only are my hands bad, but my brain is bad. So doing puzzles while fighting is never going to go well for me. Um, the, there were... Like, the one, I guess, quote-unquote puzzle, if you can barely call it that, is, like, some minor, like, platforming that you have to do during combat sometimes. Like, stuff, shit's falling, you gotta hop from rock to rock. That was fine. It took me, it took me, like, a couple tries to figure out how to do it because, um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't have the brain-eye-hand coordination <laughs> to really get onto those platforms. But in general, uh, it wasn't too punishing because of that. Uh, it was pretty easy to pick up. But yeah, just hitting stuff, hitting stuff fun. I will say that. Um, the investigation sections are the other main part of the game. So you've got combat and then you've got the not combat. And since you play as sort of like a futuristic cop, you saw, you're like solving mysteries and stuff. You're looking for clues. Um, and I thought that was fun. Um, in general, I liked looking around the areas. The areas were all very uh, like, I'm not gonna say like extensive expansive world like it's no skyrim like it's very little closed off areas uh it's not an open world but i felt like the little closed off areas you could explore were pretty detailed um and just you know fun to poke around in uh the fact that there's a mini map was kind of both a blessing and a curse because the mini map shows you exactly where you need to go for the objectives which was great when the that part of the game starts to drag on a little bit at some point so i was just i would just go to the mini map and say well I'm just gonna head directly to the big point that says new story beat here because I don't feel like exploring but at the same time there are parts where like in the mini map there's like all these little divots and holes and stuff in the environment and you can explicitly see when there's like a little hallway you can explore but there's nothing down there of significance except maybe like an item you could pick up but um in general I didn't find that the items were useful enough to be worth picking up i i did play on like the easiest difficulty granted um but there's since there's no um weapon system as in picking up new weapons to replace your old ones you just kind of upgrade the same weapon it's not like oh i can go down this hallway and find a super cool sword that i might have missed otherwise uh it it just felt it just felt like you've created a a pretty detailed little world and then told me explicitly the parts i don't need to visit um which i mean for those of for the people who get really really into this game and really really want to check out every little nook and cranny of the game world that's fine i'm sure that didn't affect their enjoyment of the game but for a person like me who's very much inclined to uh look for objective points and then go to those objective points and fill out my little check boxes that's how i get joy out of a game i i check off my little boxes and i say man i did such a good job at hitting all these objectives um the fact that i couldn't discover more objectives just organically like they were all on the map somewhere and it told you exactly where they were uh kind of took away a little bit but in like a weird way where i was glad that it was easy to find <laughs> them i don't know if this was a different game i feel like i would be more sad but also in the same way, if this was a different game, I would be more glad. It, it's, this might be obvious at this point, but I, I have very middling, um, opinions on Astral Chain. Oh, yeah, um, just, like, little things about gameplay. Um, some of the side quests were a little boring. Um, 
most of them were pretty good. Most of them were, um, it made the world feel feel more alive, but a lot of them were kind of like fetch questy. Uh, you know, bring this guy here, or, you know, get item for child, that kind of stuff. Um, the one side quest where you have to, like, follow a guy without him seeing you was kind of annoying because I kept failing, and then you had to, like, leave and come back. Like, you couldn't immediately redo it. That was annoying because I was so bad at it. <laughs> um, but that might be that might be a me thing. Uh, not necessarily a flaw in the game as a whole. Uh, as far as things that I liked in the investigation section, investigation sections, um, the actual investigating was fun. I liked the you know searching for clues, that whole stuff. Uh, felt very like you know sci-fi detective, which is I guess the point. The using the different like modes of viewing. Uh, in this section was fun because there's a there's like an I they call it the iris mode where you can turn on like the uh I guess the wireframe of the world and you can like see through walls and like identify people through walls and find clues that you can't see with your naked eye that was really cool I liked using that um and then just you know walking around talking to people that was always interesting um most of the NPCs like the not important NPCs were just kind of like recolors of the same model almost they all felt very very similar um and the fact that some of them would be named like suspicious man or shady woman was like all right well <laughs> why are we even doing this come on now guys uh, at least make it a little bit difficult but overall i enjoyed the investigation sections even if they dragged on a little bit um, as far as other minor gameplay things, the two things I have written down here is that picking cans up off the ground was fun. Um, there's a mechanic where you can pick cans up off the ground and then put them in the recycling and you get, um, good boy points for that. Uh, and by good boy points, I mean, like, <laughs> upgrade points. Um, but yeah, that was fun. I liked, I liked picking cans up. Uh, and then the other thing that I liked in the world was the red matter cleanup. So in the game... Um, as the world is, like, becoming infected with, like, this, uh, alien presence, uh, the, the aliens, or the chimeras, they're called, will leave, like, red stuff all over the ground, and if you pass your legion over it, it'll clean it up, and you'll get more good boy points for that. Um, and, I don't know, just the combination of, like, the switch rumble and the sound made it really, really satisfying. Uh, it's, it was kind of like playing, you know, those cleanup simulator games where you're, like, Oh, I gotta clean every corner. It's gonna be so awesome when it's all done. Yeah, it felt really good to do that. Um, I'll admit, uh, I did get kind of neurotic at some points cleaning up because I would see, like, a point of cleanup, like, a million miles away, like, on the other side of the map, and I'd be like, oh, I gotta stop whatever I'm doing and go get that. I need it. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad thing, especially since uh, you're not required to clean it up. There's no, like massive massive bonus for cleaning all of it up as far as i know i think you just get um upgrade like points and stuff uh so like you know it's a it's a fun optional thing that was satisfying um the next thing i'm going to touch on is the game difficulty uh i played on the lowest difficulty because i'm a baby uh i think it's just called casual which is you know perfect that I'm a casual so that works uh but yeah I thought I thought the difficulties were fine I don't know if there's an unlockable uh harder difficulty above like normal uh I assume there is but yeah I I don't think I didn't have any problems with the difficulty uh I did again I did like the unchained mode how you could just turn aspects of the gameplay off i think every game should have that not just for accessibility reasons but because i don't like doing things i don't like thinking um and the fact that i could just turn certain functions to auto like i didn't have to think about healing once during the game if i hit a certain level of health i would just automatically take a potion or whatever the fuck they were called uh and that would be fine and that was just something i didn't have to worry about as i was trying to hit people with my sword um, so that was great. Uh, I didn't have to worry about, like, uh, recalling my legion when they get too low on health or not health, energy. Uh, I didn't have to worry about that. Like, there's so many things I was able to just check on and off. And this was a really detailed list of stuff you could just turn off, the stuff the computer would do for you. And I think that is so much better than just having a complete, like, okay, combat is completely handled for you. Like, 
there's a little bit of leeway like how much how much do you how much of your uh thumb power how much of your hand health do you want to invest into this game uh here's a whole lot of options for you um but yeah uh, that is the the one thing i'd say about this game that i'm like extra hyped about the unchained mode um up next we have the story um this is probably the thing that i'm like most on the fence about because i didn't have any problems with the story per se uh it's about you play as this you play one of two like twins uh they're both cops they're both like adopted uh by a cop so they're cops too um they get their hands on these like legion things uh which are you know chimeras that fight on the on the good guy side and they can control the legions and they have to fight other legions to like recruit them back to their team after they escape um you fight chimeras you you discover the the secret plot behind uh you know the science building at the center of town uh it's like a it's a very like classic cyberpunk sort of story um but i think i think it misses a lot of like the commentary that is behind like sort of cyberpunk sci-fi stories like you know there's there's all this the first thing the first thing i think of when i think of cyberpunk is like blade runner um and i'm sure there's better more modern examples better more modern examples but that's the classic so i think blade runner and blade runner is you know half of the plot or i guess the whole plot uh is you know like oh what makes us human like what what's the difference between you and me being a human and like astral chain this isn't like the main plot but it does kind of like dip its toe into that because the sibling that you're not playing as you pick a sibling uh male or female at the start of the game the sibling you're not playing as uh and i assume it's the same for both routes but uh i played as uh the male sibling because um a reason we'll get onto when we get to the art part <laughs> but uh so the female sibling she gets like cloned and stuff and then she's like am i the real am i the real akira or am i just another clone i'm gonna have a mental breakdown about it and uh, it just i got like the feeling like when i was playing i was like oh okay this is like a cool like little plot point like this is interesting but it just felt very I'm not gonna say shoehorned in because like it does feel like it fits but it also just kind of felt like they didn't give it the time and attention it deserved and I feel like that about the majority of the plot points in the game like they're very cool in concept you know like on paper a lot of this stuff sounds really awesome um but in practice the game is just kind of like it doesn't gloss over it it's just it doesn't feel like it's got m enough meat on its bones to stand out from other things in this genre. Um, specifically, I have written here that uh, at times the plot kind of felt like a hybrid of the end of Evangelion meets Nier Automata. Um, and, you know, this game was made by, uh, I believe, same group of people that made Nier Automata, so that would make a bit of sense. Um, but... I just felt a lot of the plot points felt just like grab bagged from other I would say better pieces of media um the whole like uh Akira clones at the end of the game I was like oh this is kind of these are this is very like mass-produced Ava vibes uh, as they all you know like descend on you um you know kind of like Ray copy vibes too and I was just, the aesthetics of the game are also very kind of Evangelion. The legions specifically look very Evangelion. Uh, I'm thinking the sword legion. Um, they kind of have the, the metal armor over like flesh body look going to them. Also, <laughs> end of Evangelion spoilers <laughs> if you've made it up to this point. But um, yeah, overall, it just felt like, it felt like someone watched a bunch of very prolific pieces of media. Um tried to make something in a similar vein and did a decent job but like it's not winning any awards it's not innovating in a way that i feel like is justified for like a 60 dollars price point um i don't know if it's that much now that's how much i paid for it when it launched and i know it launched a while ago but covid happened and i got really into lobotomy corporation so leave me alone um we got there eventually uh as for other stuff uh there was a couple moments in the game where it was supposed to be like you know like really sad emotional moments like uh spoiler alert the 
care the twins' adoptive father uh disappears. Uh he's assumed dead. Um well, the a lot of the NPCs are like he's definitely not dead, but you know, that's that's what they have to say to you. <laughs> you can't just say that to a character. Uh but this might be a very personal problem, but as someone who plays just a fuck ton of Fire Emblem, if I see a father character, I know immediately that he's not making it out of this alive. So, uh, this pro- that plot point probably hit a lot harder for people unfamiliar with, like, tropes and stuff, but when the dad came on screen, the first thing I said was, oh no, he's- he's gone. <laughs> he's- he's not making it through here. Um, and I was right, he did not make it through. There might be a side quest or something that I missed that refutes that fact, and if that's true, I apologize for spreading lies. Um, but as far as I know, he didn't come back, um, and yeah, it was just kind of expected for me. Uh, there were a bunch of other sort of, going into my next point, characters. Uh, there were a bunch of other important NPC characters mostly i believe their names were alicia and Jin. were like the main ones who are like your fellow cops like your fellow legion users before the legions all ran away um and they didn't get i think enough screen time they got like they each of them got maybe like one chapter where they were like i'm gonna be your partner for the day we're gonna go fight monsters um but i'm not really gonna do anything because you have to do everything because you're the player but you know that's good uh but they just both kind of got like a flashback like a half-hearted flashback like oh here's why i love your dad so much um please be my friend uh and that just kind of felt blah you know like it didn't it didn't feel very it didn't feel very motivating for me to like either of their characters outside of just simply oh you're on my side you fight for me um as for the other characters i didn't really have any other problems with them the pink girl and the blue girl i know the pink girl's name is olive uh the blue girl's names escape me they have crazy hair um they were both kind of meh in my eyes i didn't really connect with either of them the pink girl was like fun you know she was kind of like your uh i'm not gonna say like your sassy friend but she's you know she's got a little bit of a quirky personality uh but i think me just kind of like not liking their designs got in the way of me enjoying them as characters uh, but I'm gonna count that as personal bias, so I'm not gonna hold that against them. Um, as for everyone else, everyone else is kind of blah, you know, kind of faceless grunts. Uh, there's a lot of people hanging around the police base that you can talk to. Um, none of them, I assume most of them have side quests at some point that I missed, because, uh, when I got to the end of the game, I was just kind of like, alright, I'm ready for this to be over, I don't want to <laughs> talk to everyone in this base. Um, but... Yeah, the, uh, I don't remember her name. The girl in the dog costume was funny. Um, way too much jiggle f physics, but that's a whole other issue. We'll get to the art section later. Um, she was, she was funny. Um, no real strong opinion on her. And, oh, the one other character I did enjoy was, um, drone guy. Hal. His name is Hal. Uh, I don't know whether he's named after the Space Odyssey character or the Metal Gear character, but either way, uh, nice choice. He was fun. I thought I liked his uh, his voice actor. I cannot remember who it is off the top of my head, but I assume it's someone I've heard before. Yeah, he was he was fun. I liked I liked the interactions with him. Uh, but yeah, other than that, characters characters kind of get like a a C in my brain. The twins were fine. The twin you play as doesn't talk at all. And the twin you don't play as is kind of a headstrong dumbass, at least as far as the female, um, Akira goes. Uh, but, you know, they had personality. I did enjoy that, or at least the one that talks has personality. Um, you know, standard, standard main character affair. Uh, no real strong hatred towards them. Uh, as for the soundtrack next point of business uh i thought the music fit the game perfectly uh there weren't any tracks i felt that were like i need to go download this on my phone so i can listen to it as i do my dishes like that kind of thing like i'm not gonna go buy the soundtrack on itunes but in the moment gameplay to gameplay moment you know uh i enjoyed i enjoyed the songs they're very you know rock 
esque, and that's not really my genre. But you know, hacking and slashing, you need some good some some bumpin' tunes to go with it, and I think that worked. As for the sound design, I actually really liked the sound design. I thought all the menu sounds were very fitting. Uh, lots of nice little like clicks and boops and stuff like that. Uh, the sound when you clean up the red matter is really satisfying. I thought overall, that's the word I would give the sound design in this game. Satisfying. It felt it felt good to listen to. Um, combined with the switch rumble, it just it really uh, came together in a way that felt like you were involved uh rather than you know a passive observer or player uh the one thing i will note about the sound design is that when you turn on the iris system and you look at something using iris uh it will s there's a, like a voice line that plays it says information display uh it's a lady's voice and she says that every time you hover over anything <laughs> um, I didn't personally get annoyed by it because I only turned the iris system on when the game prompted me to. Because I, I like to look at the uh, environments as as they are rather than the wireframe. You know, just enjoying the view. Uh, but every time I'd open the iris mode and I'd like hover over something and she'd go, information display, I'd be like, oh, that has the potential to become annoying. <laughs> but I would always turn the iris off for long enough where I would not get annoyed. Uh, and then I'd turn it back on again and be like, hmm, we'll see, but it ended up not being a problem. Uh, I assume someone who plays primarily with the iris on would get far more annoyed by that sound bite. <laughs> um, there might be a way to turn it off. Uh, to be quite honest, I didn't look. All right, and now to the fun part for me. This is the art part. Uh, flashy art style was lovely. I thought it looked great. It was colorful. It was vibrant. The night scenes specifically in the city were really fun. Uh, it definitely captured the visual of cyberpunk, which is, I think, very important. Um, even sort of like the rundown part of town you go to at Sector 9? 9 or 6? 6? 69? I don't know. One of those two. Uh, even that, it was very vibrant. Uh, there's like neon signs everywhere, you know, the classic, classic cyberpunk look. Uh, so I absolutely love that. The actual graphics of the game, I think, were really, really good. Um, it's a Switch game, and to my knowledge, it might not be on other systems. Uh, it might be on Steam? Unsure. Don't follow my advice on that. Uh, I played it on Switch, and I played it in handheld mode. Um, I thought it looked phenomenal. Um, I didn't see any major graphical glitches. The textures all look great. Um, the effects were phenomenal, like the actual VFX when you hit stuff. I, I was uh, amazed by those. The effect when portals open to the astral plane, that was really cool. Simple but effective, you know? That, that's how I would describe a lot of the, uh, I guess, embellishments on the main graphics of the game. Simple but effective. You know, the uh, red matter you clean up isn't exactly a complex model. It doesn't move around very much, but it, it looks good and it feels good, so that's what really matters. Uh, as for character designs, uh, overall, I love the character designs. Um, I thought most of them were pretty good. The main twins were specifically two that I enjoyed, especially the male one, and the reason I marked that down for later is because the uh, generic male uh, character for this game looks frighteningly like Kaim from Drakengard 1, which is my favorite game of all time. Um, usually I play as the female avatar, but, you know, can't resist some good Drakengard. And yes, I did recolor the legions to look like Angelus. Uh, but that is besides the point. Um, the rest of the character designs, let me think. Uh, the, like, generic cop character, uh, uniform, I thought it looked good. It was, you know, sort of a sci-fi modernization of what you might see just around or in movies nowadays. Um, the standout designs I can think of were Kyle, who is one of the guys from the, uh, section, sector nine or six, uh, I don't, still don't remember the number. Uh, from before, he's like their their leader of the faction called, I believe, the Hermits, and he had sort of like an Immortan Joe, like Mad Max sort of vibe to him, but cyberpunk, which is really awesome. I did like that. 
uh, his the fact that his name is Kyle kind of takes away from the vibe a little bit, but you know that's life. Uh, and then the other character design I really liked was Jenna. Um, she's one of the antagonists. She just kind of looks like a lady who's going through it. Um, and I really like, you know, just what if there was a lady but fucked up? Uh, she wasn't like super ultra sexy model or anything. She looked like shit. And I appreciate that because in anime games, often the women don't look like shit. Um, as far as just the human designs go, the two things, uh, most of the female characters, they all stood in that anime way where their knees face each other and they look like they have their piss real bad. Uh, that annoys the hell out of me. Uh, just have them stand normally. <laughs> they look like idiots. Um, and the jiggle physics on some characters' boobs, uh, <laughs> The game would get confused sometimes when loading in models, and so you'd be in the middle of a conversation, and then you'd switch over to a scene with a woman, and then her boobs just be like, <laughs> which is always really funny, but it definitely takes you out of the immersion a little bit. Um, so maybe just tone that down a tiny, tiny bit. Um, but yeah, overall, good looking game. Um, Comparing Astral Chain to, like, the Fire Emblem Three Houses fruit, fruit texture, uh, no contest. This game looks phenomenal. Um, as far as enemy designs go, I thought the concept of the enemy designs was really cool. Like, they're very, um, almost bone-plated creatures. Like, some of them are humanoids, some of them look like animals, some of them look like fucked-up shit you can't even name. Um, but as they started getting on and on in the game, I noticed that, uh... While they didn't necessarily meld together, as in, I wasn't getting confused as to, oh, what's, like, the armored enemy and what's the normal enemy. That never happened. The designs were, like, different enough in size and in attack patterns where I was never confused. But it did kind of feel samey from an aesthetic point of view. Uh, most of them were very much the same color, like that bone whitish and then, like, pink or red fleshy stuff underneath. So, I don't know. Just in general, I feel like maybe a slight bit more variety among enemy types uh not so much that they don't look like they're part of the same species or from the same world but you know change a, a color here or there uh you know make the the bone plating a little bit different shape because it all had a very like flowing i'm not gonna say flowing shape like chitin chitinous but like smooth and like almost like Art Nouveau. <laughs> that's the word that came to my brain when I saw them, like Art Nouveau, and I know that's not the actual way you would describe these creatures, but it's very like, it's not like jagged edges for the most part. It's very like organic shapes. Um, the boss designs were cool. Uh, the homunculi were all cool. Um, most of the homunculi, their faces reminded me of, I don't know the actual name of the boss from Nier Automata, but I know the song is Dark Colossus. Um, the big guy from the ocean who comes out of the bottom of the ocean you have to hit him with like a missile <laughs> um, uh, yeah uh, the monkey like kind of looked like him and that's not a bad thing I like that design I think just like guy with a lot of fucked up eyes that looks at you and tries to kill you is a good character design um, the rest of the boss I'm trying to remember the rest of the bosses uh, the thing is, with this game, most of the bosses would become generic enemies later on, so it would introduce the creature type as a boss, and then it would show up later, so I'm not gonna count those as bosses, but as far as story bosses go, um, Jenna, being one of the villains, the fucked up woman from earlier that I talked about, her boss designs were really cool, I have a really soft spot in my heart, I mentioned being a Drakengard fan, uh, for just, like, when a female character just get some wings and starts fucking shit up uh she just goes insane starts flying around clawing people love that uh big furry eye moment uh she does get one of those forms she gets two flying forms actually and both of them were really cool i think uh definitely if there's one thing you should look up from this game it would be jenna's like boss fight boss forms i thought those were awesome uh this video is barely a video. I will be adding no visuals because I am lazy and I just kind of want to talk into a microphone. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're curious about like 
what the best this game has to offer is, I would say it's definitely Jenna's boss design. Um, very, it, it, it was almost like Final Fantasy in presentation, you know, the big, like, winged female creature with, like, a person stuck in the front of it. Like, it was, it's very, very cool. I, I love, I love the aesthetic. I'm trying to think. The final boss. The final boss had three forms. You could only fight two of them. One of them was just for the visual. Uh, the first form is, like, this big fucking creature that looked kind of like the homunculi. Uh, a little bit different. Um... So you got the big fucking creature, which was a good design. And then you have, uh, you go inside its, like, soul or its brain, I guess. Um, and then you fight its, I guess, inside. And it's very, it, it was simple. Like, the environment, it was blank, like, white space. You're fighting this, like, cube thing, like, this tesseract thing. Uh, aesthetically simple, but, like, conceptually very cool. I did enjoy it. Um, that part particularly... The visual effects, the VFX of the game really shine because there's nothing else to distract you from the flashing lights when you're hitting this thing. Um, and that was probably the one map that I actually that was like, oh, this music is this music is rather nice. Um, but the final form, uh, a bit more generic. It was like a humanoid creature sort of thing, a bit more like the common enemies. Uh, if you ask me to pick it out in a line of common enemies, I might not be able to. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially since it was preceded by two, like, crazier, stronger forms. Uh, I think they kind of did the Sephiroth thing where he goes from super monstrous to, like, more human as you fight him. Uh, which is, while visually not really the direction I would personally take as an artist, I tend to, like, build up before you break down. Um... It's definitely a, a valid choice when it comes to boss design. Um, I kind of I kind of wish that the final boss, if you if they decide to go in that direction, which they did, uh, so ending with like a fully humanoid character, I kind of wish that it looked like the guy who had was like, oh, I'm trying to become God. I kind of wish it looked like him and not just like a Camaro with extra steps. But you know. Yeah, that's that's just how the cookie crumbles. It it's a fine design, not my favorite, serviceable. As for the UI of the game, uh, which I'll just touch on briefly, I like my user interfaces clunky, intrusive, and hard to understand. Again, third time to mention it, but I am a huge Dragon Guard fan, specifically Dragon Guard One. I just hit myself in the face with the microphone. Uh, but the interface with this game was very sleek very modern you know you're a futuristic cop you're using like all this technology uh the wireframe so it kind of it kind of held over some of that wireframe uh aesthetic even if you're out of the iris system so everything's like sleek shapes uh very very adobe illustrator vibes uh clean type faces and you know what uh for this game I will let that slide because it fit and not only did it fit it wasn't just like on the screen there like it was animated it like when you clicked on shops and stuff there'd be like rectangles going everywhere um so I think it was interesting it wasn't just oh we need a sleek clean interface let's make it as unintrusive as possible uh you know it was still on the screen you could still see it and it was interesting while well, you could see it that's my that's my big gripe with modern gaming kind of uh if, I, if there's one big thing I had to complain about when it comes to modern gaming, aside from hyper-realistic graphics that make my head hurt, um, it would be just user interfaces that are so minimal that I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, when, when buttons pop up only when you're hovering over stuff, for certain, for really simple games where it's obvious what you have to do, like really simple puzzle games where it's just like okay push the box you only need to tell me how to push the box one because once because i'm gonna remember it that's fine but like for like shooters and stuff if you're if you've played shooters your whole life like i'm sure you're getting on fine but for me i'm like oh god <laughs> what buttons are all of them help me uh but this game this game was good at you know good looking ui does does what you ask it to that's all i could really ask for next point is the length and pacing of the game so i finished the main campaign in about 10 hours i think slightly under 10 hours um i had i'm going off my switch time but uh i started playing this game i played like two hours of the game when i first bought it and then covid hit uh and then i put it down to go 
be sad in quarantine. Uh, and then I remembered I had it three years later, and I picked it up and played it. So it was probably around eight hours, actually. Um, I pretty much did mostly the main campaign. I did a couple of the side quests, uh, a few of the ones I thought were interesting. I did, I think I did all the side quests in the first two levels, and then I was like, uh, I don't really know if these are, like, useful to me. It, these aren't really improving my gameplay experience, so I'm just gonna, like, go, and then if I encounter a side quest, if it's cool, I'll do it. Uh, didn't encounter too many of those. Most of them were just kind of, like, police work stuff. There's a couple, there's a couple side quests that were, like, pretty questionable as far as just, like, you could just beat pedestrians and stuff, like, near do wells uh, and I don't know, just police violence as gameplay when you're clearly supposed to be the good guy. I don't know about that one, Chief. That didn't feel good, but other than that, there's, there's, I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure the side, I'm sure there's some side quests that I missed that really would have improved my gameplay experience, but in general, it was kind of meh. So, as far as length and pacing goes, um, the length, I like short games. I don't like spending too long in a game. I say, coming out of 90-something hours of Library of Ruina, which I might also review, because I really like that game. Um, but, in general, I like to keep my gameplay experience uh, under 15 hours if I can. Uh, if it's like a super long, if it's like a JRPG, then I'm like, all right, you get 30 hours. Um, and if it's a game I really like, it can have as much time as it wants. But since it was under 15 hours, it was 10 hours uh, for just the main quest, I thought, yeah, it's fine. The pacing had some problems. I felt like, not that it was slow. I think the actual, like, on paper, the pacing of the game is perfect because the first chapter, it kind of eases you into it. You're like, oh, you have a new legion. Go fight some monsters. There's monsters attacking the city. Go fight them. Uh, and the plot starts pretty much immediately after that. But I don't know. It just, it felt like I was, I was doing tasks, but things were just kind of happening. Like, I didn't feel motivated to continue, you know, urgently doing tasks. Like, it just, I think, you know what I think? I think it's because I did those a bunch of those side quests where it was like, oh, I need help finding my cat or whatever. And like, these side quests were taking place on the same uh, levels as like, well, fuck me, there's a monster in Times Square. We have to go deal with that. So I felt like the side quests kind of broke up the pacing of the game in a way that made it feel like the actual plot was a lot less uh, important than it was. Once I stopped doing the side quests, I definitely felt that issue go away a, a lot. Not a significant amount, but, you know, uh, there was still some problems. But once you get to the end, I think maybe, like, two chapters, uh, you've defeated, you know, one of the evil scientists. You're going to the, the final lair of the where you assume the boss to be. Like, that was fine pacing. I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's kill a guy, I assume. Yes, you end up killing a guy. It was fine. <laughs> I'll put it, I'll put it with that. I'll put it like that. It was fine. Do I recommend this game? Do I recommend Astral Chain? Uh, I recommend Astral Chain to people who already like hack and slash games. And the reason why is that there is a, uh, like a rating system, a grading system, you know, uh, I assume like F through S where you can do better and better on these maps and you can get different scores. If you're the kind of person that likes to, you know, do the do that kind of thing where you're actively like trying to get a get the best possible score um then this game is probably perfect for you because uh it seems like there's a lot of combat to do and the combat options it gives you if you turn all of the auto stuff off seems like you could do some pretty zany stuff if you're just like a casual player like me i would recommend it if you like cyberpunk if you like solving mysteries, not hard mysteries, they're not difficult mysteries. If you want difficult mysteries, go play a puzzle game. Um, but if you like solving casual mysteries, you like exploring little slices of this world, I'd say, yeah, it's a perfectly fine game to pick up. Probably not something you're gonna be laying awake at night, staring at the ceiling, thinking about how this has changed you fundamentally as a person, but not every game needs to be that, so. I would give it a 
I don't know, maybe like a 6 out of 10 as far as my recommendation goes. Uh, very good for a specific group of people, but overall, I'd say probably not worth the $60 price point. I I would consider buying this game. If I had to rebuy this game, if I had never played it before and I was I had listened to this review, I would say this is a game worth $40, not 60 or this is a game I would buy on sale or secondhand. Um, it is clearly a very well-made game, a very intelligently made game when it comes to gameplay and art, but it's short and it lacks like the deeper layers of substance I would want out of a $60 game. If I'm paying $60, here's how I judge. And this might be contradictory to what I said a few, a few mere moments ago where I said, uh, I don't like to spend more than 15 hours on a game. I, the way I judge games and their price is I like to spend a dollar per hour. So if I get a $60 game, I better get at least 60 hours of content out of it. If I get a $10 game, I want at least 10 hours of content. If I got a $2 game, if I play for two hours, I'm happy. If I got a game for free, <laughs> then I'm happy no matter what, because I've gotten something for free. Um, but I paid 60 bucks for this game. Even if I even if I played all of the side content, I don't think there would be 60 hours of gameplay in here. Um, maybe if I was, you know, one of the hack and slash fans who's just running these chapters over and over and over trying to get the best possible score, then yeah, I'd probably get my money's worth. But just for a casual gamer, uh, I don't think so. But yeah, that is my short little review of, well, short. <laughs> I'm looking at the clock, 47 minutes. Wow, okay. I had a lot more to say than I thought I did. But I hope you enjoyed this little review. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to leave a like on a video or follow because I don't know if I'm gonna do any more of these. And this is kind of a variety channel that I don't make any money off of. So if you enjoyed it, um, well, I'm glad. Uh, if you want to talk about video games with me, um, I'm constantly talking about video games on my Twitter, and that is DT75Art. Um, granted, mostly Dragon Garden Fire Emblem, but hey, I like all sorts of games. I am making an effort to get through my backlog. I have a backlog of like 7,000 games, so I'm never going to do it, but I'm, I'm making an effort, and on my Twitter, people can publicly vote as to what games I'm playing next. Uh, currently, I am five hours into Shin Megami Tensei V, uh, absolutely loving it. This is probably the opposite feeling I'm getting from Astral Chain. So, hopefully, I will finish that game and I will be able to make a quote-unquote short review of that as well. But, yeah, that is my final verdict. Six out of ten, uh, would not play again, but I don't know. I, I had a decent time while playing it the first time. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.